before it's too late. Not all lakes and ponds in Denmark were formed by glacier activity. This is the former Lake Ross, which once dominated Finderup. Up till uh, 1869, it was a big lake, about 80 hectares or so. Over the last century, three attempts have been made to drain Lake Ross and reclaim the land for agriculture, but all have failed due to underground springs that feed the lake. The area is now invaded by willow trees and has turned into a bog, vegetated bog. But it's still a big swamp with water under it. One of the most ambitious uh, uh, things in the new management plan for this training area here, Finnorp training area, is to recreate the, uh, the former Lake Ross. And um, we would do that by making a wall at the watercourse at the north tip and raising the water level back to the, its original state to get a wonderful big lake. The area has great biological importance due to the abundance and variety of rare plants that grow here. The restoration undertaken by the military will provide even more protection for this patch of natural beauty. Relentless north winds have for eons brought nesting seabirds to the islands along the western coast of Denmark. Many birds travel from Africa, China, and even as far away as Antarctica to nest on these shores. But like any attractive European coastline, people now flock here each summer. The birds which once nested on these beaches have had to find new places to form their colonies. This is the small island of Rameau, an Air Force target range off the west coast of Jutland. It is also home to probably the largest and most diverse group of breeding seabirds in Denmark. In recent years, the size of the colony has swelled as seabirds from across Denmark seek out safer breeding grounds. Blasted continuously by the harsh north winds, these tiny chicks huddle under any shelter they can find, whilst adults search relentlessly for food. This delicate bird with the unusual upturned bill is an avocet. Shaping up to each other, these two males show off to any female that might be watching.
Avocid numbers are on the decline throughout Europe. And without the relative calm and safety of the sand dunes on this military training area to breed and raise their brood in safety, there would be even greater pressure on their survival. The bustling colonies of seabirds are not the only creatures to take advantage of this island sanctuary. Harbour seals also raise their young here. But life in the North Sea is never easy, even with the Air Force on side. Here the laws of nature are a cruel reality, and only the strongest will live to leave the island and pass their genes on to future generations. The seabirds nesting here come and go with the seasons, but others live here on a more permanent basis. Where some species survive in the natural habitat, others are given a helping hand. Perched high in a purpose-built nest box, secured in one of the many lookout towers, a pair of kestrels are kept busy feeding a nest of hungry mouths. Hunting almost constantly, the parents return to their young every 20 minutes with small rodents to be shared between the chicks. As a mature bird, this young kestrel will fly and hunt in the skies of a country where it can be certain that its survival is a priority. The Danish government, along with the military, is providing an example to the world of how nature and human society can coexist to the benefit of all. By looking inward and dealing with their own ecological problem, Denmark should be an inspiration to every nation of the world. Denmark is only a small country and we have a very small army and thereby it's very, very important to understand that we cannot save, cannot save the world, we should not even try. But what we can do is to hopefully to establish an example that uh, in everybody else can learn from. Thanks to the efforts of the Danish military, the young kestrels may one day nest in the new oak trees that will cover large tracts of Denmark. Perhaps they will raise their own young around the shores of the newly restored Lake Ross, or fly in the skies above Oxbull and Boris training areas, where the natural habitat continues to be rejuvenated. The people of Denmark, its military and its government have proven that it's possible to right the wrongs of past generations and that the natural environment can be restored for the future of all creatures on the planet before it's too late.